hello. Yes, I'm in my vehicle. Um, I just wanted to, I'm right outside my barn, but I felt like sitting in here and hanging out while I'm feeding Hercules. He takes a while to drink, but he drinks this whole bottle. Um, he takes a little while, but he's very hungry and very happy. Um, but this felt like a good time and kind of appropriate to tell the story of Hercules. Uh, let me just start from the beginning. So, Cookie was, Cookie is, who is his mom, was, um, this was her first time having babies. Um, and I could tell, it looked to me like she had more than one in there, which is, it's not unusual, but it is no normal for first, first timers to just have one baby. And she's small, Cookie is small. So, I want to say it was a week before Christmas. Um, and Daisy went into labor. That was kind of a slow labor, but it went well. The babies were, went, were great. I mean, they were on their feet almost immediately. But I was tired by the time I got done with that because I helped with that delivery. Once I'd seen the nurse, I was like, okay, it's time for me to just rest for the night. What? <laughs> I turned around and Cookie was in labor, like pretty far along in labor. Because I'd watched Daisy through like the early stages of labor. This was not early. This was, she was far along. And I think I remember when I noticed it, I thought I saw the baby, the baby's hooves already. Um, because they're supposed to come out, their two front hooves and their little nose. Um, that's the optimal position. So I ran back up to the house to grab some more supplies, which, you know, I needed towels for her and things like that. Came back down, gloved up, and uh, she was you know, like basically pushing when I got back down here. But, and I saw hooves. Um, so I could kind of see it as I was coming in to, to help her, but she stayed that way for a good while. Um, and it didn't seem like she was really pushing. With Daisy, she had very clear intervals of like, okay, she's resting and then, okay, now she's pushing. You know, she would, sometimes she would yell a little bit. Cookie wasn't really, I couldn't really see her doing that. And I was starting to get nervous because I didn't know how the baby was doing in there, you know, being so like you know in the birth canal and um so I started to help but I swear this baby was just lodged in there and I, st I, I pulled the legs out the head was nowhere to be seen so I was like is he is is he, is he breach what's going on um cause I you know I don't know what the heck I'm doing and Cookie I mean, she has those natural instincts, but this was her first time, so she wasn't experienced with this. So, I pulled on that baby harder than I ever thought you had to pull to deliver a baby goat. But it just seemed like it was taking too long, and I was afraid that something was going to happen to the baby. You know, he was going to, you know, get, get too constricted in there. So, finally... Finally, finally, I got him out. This is after pulling so hard on his legs, I thought I was gonna hurt him um, and hurt her. Um, but it seemed like the only option. And as soon as he came out, I knew things were different and I knew we were in trouble because he was he was just floppy. And the labor was so scary, you know, as soon as he emerged, I was just like, please, 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 please be alive. Um, and he was just, he was, a, he was like a dish rag. Is the only way I could just limp as a dish rag basically lifeless like there was not much and I had just seen two extremely healthy births so I knew this was the polar opposite as far as the way he was acting so I just started doing everything I could I was rubbing him I was you know I was drying him off with the towel I was just holding him I was trying to just sort of transfer some life into this baby I didn't know how but and he was he was awake but just not very responsive and um, so I got him around to his mom, but it wasn't long before she started pushing again. Mind you, I did not realize that she had more than one. She started pushing again, and uh, so I helped her deliver the second one, which wasn't nearly as bad. And then the third one um, was a little bit complicated, um, but that one was fine. But while she was delivering those other two, all I could think about was the first one. Um, because the other two I could tell when they came out, they were doing great. They were just like Daisy's kids. They were, they were, you know, one of them crawled halfway across the stall almost as soon, I think it was Hugo, almost as soon as he was born, he was just, he was moving around. This, this first baby 
barely any movement, you know, a little bit of life. But um, when I pulled him out, I think what his position was, it's all a blur now, but I believe his head was bent back in the birth canal. So instead of um, coming out with his nose, it was like folded back. But um, we just finished. But yeah, he was just so, so weak. And I'd experienced like with my granddaddy's herd, every now and then a baby doesn't make it. Um, and so I knew that was a possibility, but that's just, it's, it's the opposite of all my instincts to ever want to just accept that. And I was just doing everything I could for this baby. Um, but I didn't know what to do. That's the thing is I was like, okay, I try to get him cleaned off as much as I can try to get him, uh, him and his mom to interact. You know, maybe she can sort of liven him up, but she had the other two to worry about too. And so they were getting more cleaned off and he was staying all like dirty and he had like hoop and hay and dirt all over him. So I brought him to the car. It was just like this, except for it was way colder outside. It's just like this. I brought him into the vehicle. I had my vehicle on, um, just as a sort of a warm place to go in between, uh, births. So I came in here and was like drying him off with paper towels and just holding him and just trying to think of what to do. Um, his little tongue was like sticking a little bit out of his mouth and you know, he was awake, but just there was no spark there. So I didn't have any food for him up at the house. I didn't have any colostrum or, or anything like that. And colostrum is what they have to have. You know, they need it fairly soon after delivery and they have to have it in the first, you know, 24, 48 hours. And, um, so I did as much as I could for him. And then about this time it's late, I'm exhausted. And I, basically all I could do was leave him for the night. And when I look back on it, maybe I should have taken him with me. But my thought process was if I take him, I don't have anything to feed him up at the house and he hasn't eaten yet. So his chances are even less up at the house. Um, at least with his mom, you know, Sometimes nature will just work itself out and she can take care of him and he'll start nursing. So I had to leave them and go home. And when I left, I didn't think I'd see. I, I remember just holding him one last time and just looked at him and I was like, just tr try to hang in there, which is very hard for me because I get very attached to my animals, as everybody does. But um, so I know. So the next morning, you know, I had a fitful night's sleep. The next morning I got up and I, the whole time I was getting ready to come down here, I was like, you're just going to have to be prepared for what you're going to see because he's not going to be alive when you get down here. <laughs> so around the corner and he's still alive. He's still a dish rag. He still is not up on his feet like the others, but he's alive, which was just incredible because it was like in the twenties outside, you know, it was very cold and he had like just nothing in his system. I don't know if he managed to get even a little bit of colostrum overnight or what. So I took him up to the house to get him warm, keep him in the house. And I called my vet, this was on a weekend, but my vet's great about helping me out in <laughs> these crisis situations. And the vet said, try to milk out some colostrum from the mom, try to bottle feed him, you know, and then see what happens. And if that doesn't work, um, I'll tube feed him. You can bring him up to the office and I'll tube feed him and I'll teach you how to tube feed him. So I tried to bottle feed him, but he was too weak, which is normal for when kids are at that point, they can't really bottle feed. Um, so I contacted the, the vet and was like, um, I said, he's doing a little bit better, but I, I just don't know. And my vet said, you know, okay, it's probably a good idea to, to go ahead and tube feed him. So I took him to the vet. My vet lives only like five minutes down the road, which is fantastic. Um, took him over there and the vet showed me how to tube feed him and it's the most incredible thing in the world. He said, I'll teach you how to do this. He says you can save hundreds of baby goats life, lives this way. Um, cause he said, there's no magic pill for babies that are in this state. They just need warmth and food. That's what I, you know, warmth and colostrum. So, um, you insert this tube down their throats, um, you know, through their mouth, not through their nose. You insert the tube through their throats or down their throats um, and it goes all the way down to the stomach and you take a syringe full of colostrum and um, and push it into the tube and to just fill their stomach with a couple ounces of, of colostrum. Um, and it feels like you need a million hands to do the whole process. You're trying to keep their head tilted up, 
you're supposed to feel their throat so you can feel where the tube's going down. It's a, it's a very nerve-wracking process, but my vet is so wonderful and did a great job of, of like just showing me how to do it, being matter-of-fact about it, keeping me calm. <sighs> so, learned how to do it uh, and got a couple ounces of colostrum in him and took him home. So, I think I tube fed him maybe one more time that day and then um, he was doing a little better, so I was like, maybe I'll leave him with his mom tonight. And it was probably 10 or 11 o'clock. I was hanging out in the house, and I thought, I can't do it. I can't leave him down there. He's not strong enough. He wasn't moving around great in the straw because he wasn't he wasn't very uh, mobile. I was like, I can't, I can't do it. I cannot leave this baby <laughs> overnight. So I went and scooped him up and brought him up to the house. So 3 o'clock in the morning, I check on him because he was sleeping in a cardboard box in my room. He'd gone back to almost no response. Like, but I thought I was losing him again. So I'm sitting on the floor by the kitchen at three o'clock in the morning, tube feeding this baby goat. And I was having to take the tube out and put it back in again because I was afraid I wasn't doing it right. And it was just, it was like, I was just fighting for his life. Um, and I got a couple ounces in him and he started to perk up and literally from that moment on he's been just just straight up no more problems and has been cute and goofy and strong and uh, just watching him like start to walk and then start to run start to bounce and start to just demand food. <laughs> and now he, he thinks he owns the place and then he's a big fat stinker. Now I can keep up with the rest of the herd. And uh, yeah, so my vet saved this baby goat's life and showed me how to save his life. Um, and what a skill to have. I Now I have the equipment um, to do it again if I needed to um, next time we have baby <laughs> babies in a couple of years once I've recovered from this round. Um, and this guy thinks I'm his mama now because he was uh, separated from his mom so long she doesn't really recognize him anymore. Um, and so I'm his mom <laughs> for a long, a good while. He stayed up at the house with me, especially at nights because it was getting a little cold and they don't regulate their body temperature well when they're weaker like this. Um, but now he can stay down in the barn because he's, he's a nice, strong boy now. But yeah, so that's the story of Hercules. Um, now he likes to leap up onto furniture and climb and run and play. And whenever I'm out of sight, he starts yelling for me <laughs> and we're buddies. And I named him Hercules as soon as I was pretty sure he was going to survive. I, I tried to hold off on naming him because I just did I was trying to keep from getting so attached that I just couldn't stand it if something happened to him. But um, once I saw him really fighting for it, I was like, yeah, I got to name him. And I'm going to name him Hercules um, because he's gone through all these trials and he's fought through it and he's a powerful little fella. <laughs> now I'm sitting with him the exact same way I was sitting with him on that night thinking that I was just losing this baby goat um, and he's probably two to three times the size that he was when he was born um, and he just sucked down eight ounces <laughs> of milk um, and is a healthy and happy baby um, so I wish I could get the time machine and go tell <laughs> the Samantha that was sitting there paralyzed with um, one hour old Hercules that uh, five week old Hercules doing great <laughs> so yeah I love him and he's a survivor yes <laughs> Neely gave me a heart attack multiple times yeah I don't care